nation that enjoys unity and cultural diversity. The president called on Kenyans to respect divergent opinion, which is entrenched in our multi-party democracy. The head of state urged Kenyans to work together and develop the country and said the recent elections should not be cause for disunity. Every Kenyan voted where he or she desired, and that was their right. But there comes a time when a decision is made, and then we move forward together as a people, focused on one common vision, one common dream for our nation, Kenya, and for future generations. And I believe if we can keep that spirit going, that is the spirit of our forefathers. Our ability to agree, to disagree when necessary, but to come together with a common objective of building a great, prosperous nation called Kenya that belongs to all of us. And this is the mission that we have. That this is an election that was canvassed on the basis of the unity of our country and the development of our country. Two very cardinal things that I'm saying Kenyatta believed in. Now I want to say that I am confident that my boss, the president of Kenya today, is a man that we can trust to deliver on those two items upon which this election was contested. On the international front, Albania's uh, communist regime executed and imprisoned thousands during its half-century rule. But since its fall in 1992, the country has been slow to create memorials to those who suffered. That's gradually changing, and victims and perpetrators are now part of efforts to turn key sites into memorials and museums. Three decades since it was last used as a labor camp, the buildings at Spach Prison are crumbling. But Saimir Maliku's memories of being imprisoned by Albania's 